together. I want you to open your Bibles to Mark chapter 5. <laughs> Mark chapter 5, if you're there, say, uh huh, uh huh. I'm just preparing you. We started preparing the church on Wednesday for our anniversary, which is coming up on the second, even though the anniversary is on the first. But we're going to go to the nearest Sunday, which is the second. So I just want you to know that all I'm doing this morning is teaching the Word of God, making you prepare you to get yourself ready for what we're about to do. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to try to inspire you, get your faith up, so you can have an understanding and prepare yourself for what God wants you to do. Amen. Can I hear an amen this morning? All right. <laughs> Now, so yesterday, I mean on Wednesday, we were talking about it. If you were not in church on Wednesday, I encourage you to get the tape because it will bless your socks off. All right. This morning, we're going to be talking about the woman with the issue of blood. She had been crying out in her heart silently. Pain was so bad, she couldn't say a word. To the north and south, she had been the east and the west. She went. Are you still here? All right. Now you know the story of the woman with the issue of blood, how she came and then she taught Jesus and she got healed. But I want to begin to contextualize the teaching this morning because it's going to help you to appreciate that. Because I know you've heard the teaching so many, many times. I've taught it in church several times. But this morning we're going to look at it from a slightly different perspective and we trust God that faith will be inspired. Because you see, everything that you've got to do with God, you've got to do in faith. The Bible says without faith it is impossible for you to please God. Are you still here? So we need to walk in faith. I have told you that this year is one of the most spectacular, I believe, of all of the years in the history of this nation. Because Nigeria is about to start a new ascendancy. Let me put it that way. Something new is happening already <clears throat> that will soon crystallize. Because every nation, according to the word of God, has a time of the visitation of Almighty God. And the Bible clearly tells us, it is not of him who wrongs, of him who wills, but of God who shows mercy. It's not by your power or by your might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And God is about to demonstrate that he is in control because Christ has been called the governor of the nations. He is not going to be. He already is. And therefore, if he is the governor of all the nations, he must decide what goes on in every country. In every nation turn to someone and say amen this morning amen. and so we want to put this teaching in proper perspective so that all believers here gathered this morning can be blessed amen so i want to be look into your bibles please it begins with the story of jairus <clears throat> mark chapter 5 verse 22 and behold, there come at one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, that is Jesus, he fell at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, for you to understand what I'm saying to you, I want you to picture. See, this church is about a few thousand people. But we read, his, the theologians tell us that at the time that Jesus preached the Sermon of the Mount, there were at least 100,000 people following him. Think about that kind of crowd. The National Stadium can't contain that. The National Stadium is not half that number. So we are talking about a situation when people are following Jesus. Crowds, pressing. So what would happen is that they would form some kind of a shield around him. So he doesn't get knocked down. But still the people were still pressing, wanting to touch him. Wanting to, to, to feel this great Lord, this great master, this great healer, this great prophet. Whatever they thought he was. So it was a very crowded place. And an, an enthusiastic crowd. That's why the Bible said they thronged him. They were pressing on him. Trying to rip him apart. I remember the first time I went to perform in Calabar. After my music. I couldn't get into the venue. The crowd wouldn't let me. 
That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I, I'm the one coming to perform. They won't even let me get into the venue. There were too many people. They surrounded the vehicle I was driving. I had to drive out of the place, go look for a bush path, and I had to climb over the fence to get into the place. And that is nothing compared to what I'm telling you right here. So the Bible says that Jairus, being a, a ruler of the synagogue, had some kind of access. Remember what I told you. It is who you know. That's always been like that with God. It's the same thing with men. Your connections will determine how far you go. Being a ruler of the synagogue, he had a, some kind of connection and they allowed him to talk to Jesus. So now Jesus is going somewhere. And as he's going somewhere, something dramatic is about to happen. Are you still here? Now I came to tell you this year that the Lord Jesus does not have to start walking towards your house. It's not necessary. You don't have to wait for him to say, okay, now I'm going to number 15 at Ibajo Street to go and see the man, you know, called Saul. He doesn't have to. All you need this year is to wherever Jesus is headed. If he's on his way to heaven, if he's on his way to hell, if there's anywhere he's going, all you need is to make the contact. You don't need to wait for him to come to your house. You can interrupt his meeting. You can interrupt the prayer session. You can intervene in a situation. God is giving you access to the Lord. Because we said this is the acceptable year of the Lord and God is delighted in you. The woman of whom we are about to read didn't ask permission. Didn't have access to Jesus like Jairus. She was a nobody. By every standard she shouldn't even be in that crowd. Yet she's about to make the greatest contact with God that anyone has ever made. Are you listening this morning? I can tell you this morning that you may just be in the crowd. You may just be following. It might be pastor in front, the bishop in front, the pope, the deaconess. I don't know the officers like Jairus who are the leaders of the synagogue, of the church, the body of Christ. And you are not the head of department. You are not a, a deacon. You are not an apostle or a priest or whatever you are. But I came to tell you that because the spirit of God is upon you, because Jesus dwells on the inside of you, because you are filled with the Holy Ghost, because of the blood of the prophecy, you can make contact with God this year like you've never done before and all you have to do is exercise your faith I don't care how thick that crowd is I don't care how busy God is I don't care who is the one that is talking to him at that time when you stretch out your hand and touch God Almighty in faith he will stand still and you will become the center of attraction can you say amen somebody this woman uh, I'm gonna give you this juice uh, now the Bible says Jesus was on his way. He was just on his way to see Jairus. That is where some of you miss God. That's where some of you miss God. Because you are always attaching personalities to him. Do you understand? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. There's nothing wrong with that. The God of Okotie. The God of Dr. Adiboye. Pastor Bakari. Professor Benson in Dahosa. And we attach personalities to God. Like Jairus, he's introduced as an important person. Not only that, he's connected with the temple. And he's on his way. Jesus is following the man. Because he really doesn't care. As long as you come to him, he'll help you. But many of us have missed God because we thought that God would never answer us. Because we thought that God would never be that, I mean we're not that important as that we can call upon the name of the Lord and he can hear us. And he can answer us. But this woman is going to prove it to you. That you don't have to be a prominent person. You don't have to be anything. Just come by the new and the living way. Can you say amen? So now Jesus is on his way to see the daughter of Jairus. Verse 23. And he besought him greatly saying, my little daughter had... Like at the point of death, I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now listen, I want you to listen to the story. When Jairus is speaking, Jesus has to hear, so there has to be quiet. When you have a crowd like that, you say, Master, Master, my daughter, my daughter, my, my daughter is dying. I need you to come now and touch her. 
The woman is at the back. She's hearing a man of God, as it were, telling another man of God how to heal someone. And what he's saying is, Jesus has to touch the girl. The woman knows Jesus can never touch her from the circumstances. So she has to be the one to touch him. You didn't hear what I said, did you? He can't. He doesn't even know who she is. But a procedure has been laid down here. So that's why he's following. He's going to touch somebody. Oh, isn't that enough to discourage you some more and say, Well, he'll never touch me. Who am I that he will? How, how am I? How is he going to? He doesn't even know my name. He's not ever going to touch me. Oh, glorious saint. You need to do the touching. Because the point is, it's not whether Jesus touches you or whether you touch him. It's to make contact. Are you still here? It's to make what? The contact. So Jairus is saying, come and make contact. And the woman understood it. You say, why would she understand it? Because in the Old Testament, turn with me to Leviticus chapter 15. If you're still here, are you still here? Muni, are you still here? Mm -hmm. Are you still here? Thank you. In Leviticus chapter 15, God tells Israel about contact. <laughs> oh, Laman said they can. Are you still here? All right. Ho, 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 ho. Verse 19. And if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the evening. Now check this out. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she seated upon shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And whosoever toucheth anything that she had sat upon, and whosoever toucheth anything that she had sat upon, shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be unclean until the evening. And if it be on her bed or anything where she is seated, when he toucheth it, he shall be unclean until the evening. Now listen to what has been said here about this. Now, this woman has an issue of blood. She's menstruating. So, she is going to be separated. Now, I explained to you, remember what I told you, about the menstrual period. Now, this, this scripture tells you that the menstrual period is, a, is, a, is connected to uncleanness. And that is why I said to you, the first time we mentioned it here, that that is a result of sin. Because if it was a natural process, God wouldn't regard you to be unclean. But because it happened in the Garden of Eden, and remember what I told you, because the Bible says the life is in the blood. And so when she ate of the fruit, rather than destroy her, her blood came right out of her as a sign of the life that God would have taken, suspended temporarily by the blood of bulls and of rams. And she keeps, um, she keeps uh, flowing, that blood keeps flowing, keeps flowing. That is why it was necessary that this story would be brought to you. Because of the significance to the land of Israel. To such a point that you are not expected to touch, not even the woman. It's seed that is sown in connection with Christ. Then he tells you that you have a double portion or 100 fold return. Because really, if your payment here is only a demonstration of your faith, a seed phase. But the woman was entering into works. And in the realm that she is dealing, this is a spiritual realm. And the Bible says that she heard about Jesus. Let me not preempt myself. Are you still here? Where is that verse? Verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Ladies and gentlemen, the woman knew that the realm in which she was being had nothing to do with medicine. 
And that's why I wanted to show you the book of Leviticus. She knew that she had entered into a realm. Why? Because she heard about Jesus. When you read it in the, in the Greek, the word, the definite article is there. When she had heard of the Jesus. Because Jesus was not the only one who had that name. But there was a particular Jehoshua or Joshua that we are talking about here. So when she had heard about Jesus, the Jesus. Question is, what did she hear? It's not told. What did they tell her? We don't know. But we can tell from what she did. They said something to her. Because all the Bible brings out is his name. When she had heard about the Savior. That's, what, that's how the Bible introduces him. In other words, everything that she heard about Jesus had to do with what? Salvation. When she had heard about the Savior. Because today, when you hear about him. He's going to be savior to you in any circumstance. He's going to save you from your sin. He's going to save you from your disease. He's going to save you from your misery. He's going to save you from your problems. From your relationships that are destroying you. From every kind of rebellion that is in your heart. He's going to save you. Why? Because his name encapsulates salvation. And when they spoke to her. She knew. That this one was beyond all the physicians. She doesn't need to get examined. She doesn't need to answer questions. How long this sickness has been. She just knew that it was time for transfer. This year. God is ready to transfer. You didn't hear what I said. He is going to transfer something to you by a mutual exchange because she knew she had something that Jesus needed to change she had uncleanness not just a disease you see you can have a disease and not be unclean you can have blind eyes you are not unclean because you are blind but this one rendered her spiritually impotent. And so she had to trust in the efficacy of his cleanness to supersede her own cleanness. So that when she touches him, there will be an exchange. Her own cleanness will immediately go to him. His cleanness will come to her. For he is written, God made him to be seen who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him can you say amen somebody and so when she touched him she deposited something inside of him for which he had to die to remove every sickness he healed they deposited something inside of him that he was going to pay for at the cross it wasn't for free as soon as she went behind she said I know it because I have read it all I gotta do this time is reach out but let me ask you how was it possible a woman that has been sick for 12 years if you see some people that are sick even for one year I told you what happened to me I couldn't even walk and we're told that the woman got worse every time she went to a physician she got worse think about you getting worse 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 for 12 years what kind of power does she have to pull through that crowd make way i go i'm coming with the likes of peter there judas iscariot how was it going to be possible? Zacchaeus, with all of his connections, couldn't as much as even see him. He had to run, climb a tree. Here is an infirm woman, weak, 
bowed down, been sick for 12 years, been isolated for 12 years. The devil would have told her, touch him not. Don't you know that he's the son of the living God? Be gone from this place, you filthy sinner. Like he tells some of you, when you're ready to come to God for something, he reminds you of the things you've done. There's even a sign of your worthiness on your body. But yet, face will take you by the new and the living way. We approach the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Bible says our faith will make a way for us. Because the Bible said that when she heard about Jesus, she started talking to herself. She said out loud, just like we saw on Wednesday, if I can touch him, if I touch him, if I touch him, I will be healed. Do you know how many people heard? Do you know how many demons told her she was mad and she was crazy, that it was impossible? Do you know that? Do you understand that? Child of God, do you know how many people will tell you what you're trying to do is impossible? They will tell you that you're a non-entity and you can't do it. You've been sick for 12 years. You've been filthy. You have not been faithful. You have not been this. You've not been that. But faith will make a way where there is no way. Because your faith looks up to him, the Lamb of Calvary. And when you come in faith because of the words that you have spoken. Remember what we said on Wednesday. Faith needs what? An audience. You must speak. The Bible says, we have believed, therefore we speak. She said, if I touch him, as she was going to the crowd, she was saying it. If I touch him, I'm going to be healed. If I touch him, I'm going to be. If I touch him, make way, I'm going to be. She kept saying it. It's in the present continuous tense. She was saying it. She kept saying it until she touched him. If I can just touch him, move out of my way, Peter. Move out, Judas, move out of my way. She kept Jairus was standing with Jesus. They were going to his house. And this crowd. He's going to heal a girl that is dying. He's going to heal a girl that is dying. The network news has just announced. Jesus is on his way to heal a girl that is dying. She's a young girl. Jairus, the famous Jairus, has talked to Jesus. They are on their way. The cameras are on Jairus and on Jesus. But something spectacular. More spectacular. Than what the cameras could pick. Than what anybody knew was happening behind the scenes. The Bible says he came, she came from where? Behind. Listen to me, child of God. I don't know how relegated you have been. But I'm telling you, there is a way that God has made for you. And it's a way of faith. It might be obscure. It might be something that is totally insignificant. Nonetheless, just follow that path. Did she know that 2,000 years after, I'll be reading about her. Did she know? No, she didn't. Every activity that you're carrying on today will be told in heaven. Will be told at the right time on earth. What you did, what part you played, the role that you played in the fulfillment of God's will. Our lives as Christians is to bring the will of God to fruition. It might cost us our lives in the process. It might cost us shame. It might cost us all kinds of things. But we must resolve and maintain that resolve with equanimity. And move towards that path. Because one day when the story is told, no matter how insignificant you think that action is today, it will count in the kingdom of Almighty God. And the Bible says it's not him that men commended, but him that the Lord commands. And God commands this woman. In her little corner, she was fighting for her life. Faith will keep you going. Faith will give you the fortitude, the tenacity, the resilience to stand the test of time. You will go conquering and to conquer. 
in this year 2003 many things will stand in your way but like the woman with the issue of blood let the confession be in your mouth that christ in you is the hope of glory let there be a confession in your mouth that you can do all things through christ who strengthens you let the confession be in your mouth that you are above and not beneath let the confession be with you that god or in you that he surrounds you as the mountains surround jerusalem and that underneath you are his everlasting arms then go conquering and to conquer and go do that which god has called you to do and put the enemy to flight for a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but they will not come near you they will come against you one way but they will flee seven ways you will know that you know that haven't done all you were saying can you say amen so the bible says she came from the throne from behind in that hand cursed sinful hand alienated hand she stretched it think of that moment between the time she touched him and the time she got healed doubt 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 she says no i must i know i will yes i know i know i know i know if i touch if i touch if i die And listen to me. This is the beauty of it. See, when God was about to make a way for her, He made a way for her the way she would understand it. She didn't have to follow the pattern of Jairus. She didn't have to follow any other pattern. She followed the path that was peculiar to her. She was a woman with the issue of blood. She knew her own condition. She understood that when people touched her, they were unclean. So she reasoned, if I touch him, something will happen. It was a unique situation to her. Ladies and gentlemen, when God wants to bless you this year, he will bring you into a situation that is unique to you. You're not going to have to act like pastor, act like the bishop, act like anybody. It will be you and him alone. A concept that you're familiar with. An idea that you know. So that when you walk that path, you have understanding. And it is a simple path that you understand. And it will be unique to you. Because that's what makes the difference. Jairus didn't have faith. Like the centurion who said, you don't have to come to my house. Just stand there and say the word. And my servant will be healed. He didn't have that faith. He wanted him to come and make contact and God was going to honor that the same way he honored that of the centurion the same way he honored the woman with the issue of Lord diversities but the same God working on and all are you still here the diversities of operation but it's the same spirit that energizes all of them and so you need to understand my friend that the way he's going to come at you this year is going to be a way that is unique to you you will know when he begins to talk to you this is a familiar territory you will understand it and you will go forth and achieve what you got to achieve are you still here? So the Bible tells me that she went there and she touched him. And when she touched him, faith. Oh. Let me tell you something that Jesus said. Verse 24, she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight with the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Did you see that? Jesus didn't give her anything. She took it. You didn't hear what I said. Listen to me. Jesus did not give her. She what? Took it. Did you hear what I said? Because something happened to him without his, quote, permission. So he says, who did that? Did you hear what I said to you? Let me say it again because you're... I don't think the thing has is really settled in your mind. 
A man is on his way to a place to do something. Somebody comes from behind. Shh. As she lays hands on him, something goes out of him. Shh. And when that happens to him, he stopped. Ye, who touched me? Virtue. Power. In other words, all the people that were following him, pushing him around, hey, Savior, hey, Joshua. They touched him. You know that because Peter is going to respond to him and say, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody has been touching you. <laughs> but somebody came and took something without asking. They say, like Jairus, excuse me, can you please come? Because when Jesus is about to reach, you know, when he gets to where he's going to pray for this young girl, he's going to touch her. And when the power goes into her, he's going to know. He's trying to heal her. He's only going to say, why did you take my power? He didn't. This woman came from behind and took it. Faith makes a demand on God. Faith apprehends it. The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You don't understand what I'm telling you. You don't understand what I'm telling you. Too many of you are always waiting. God, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? When the Bible already tells you. It's his will. The leper came and said, if it is your will, you can heal me. She didn't ask him. She knew it. The power that is in God has been put there in Christ Jesus for you. If you don't take it, it will be wasted. He would have carried all that virtue to Jairus' house. Not because it was not available. You didn't have to ask him. She came there and she grabbed it by faith. And she And when that happened, the crowd stood still. Why? Because the master stood still. Let me read that to you. Check this out. Uh huh. Somebody say, uh huh, uh huh. Uh-huh. You may have read it, but you didn't see it. But I'm so glad he did what he did. Check this out. And Jesus, immediately knowing, in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him around one woman changed his direction you didn't see that he's going like this hallelujah 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 thousands are following him something happens to Jesus and instead of going this way he turns around are you still here my friends you want god's attention walk by faith he will turn away from ten thousand people he will turn away from 10 million people he will turn away from a whole nation he will turn around from any kingdom just to turn around to look at you because you had the courage you had the boldness to stand and touch him by faith because you know that only through faith can you please God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hey. I came to make an announcement that in this new age, God is going to be turning like this, 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 turning like this. Because you will walk in faith. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hey! Can you imagine the kind of dance God will be dancing? When householders surround him, <laughs> you touch him, he will say, hey. This guy touches him, he will say, Ah, this way, hey. 
They said God is dancing, oh. He's just turning around in house, oh my God. <laughs> Hallelujah! For the lights are shining bright Jesus Christ He'll make all things alright In His time He'll make me really see Otherwise It really wouldn't be right